Hi, my name is Scott, N3FJP, and in this video I'd like to give you a brief tutorial of how to use my ARRL field day contest log and just a little bit about field day in general. Now this isn't going to be an exhaustive overview of every feature within the program. This is just going to be enough to introduce you to the software so if you're new uh, you'll, you'll know enough to get started and be able to use the software just fine and be able to roll right along with the field day event. If you're new to amateur radio, radio is magic. There are physics that explain it and if you get into the math and science and all that it's amazing in that way as well but at the end of the day what we're doing is we are communicating around the country and potentially around the world when conditions are right and beyond with nothing more than a radio and a wire or piece of metal antenna and there is no other connection so what is field day all about the main emphasis of field day is operating under emergency conditions and often in a remote or temporary setup. We all are trying to make as many contacts as we can. Another emphasis is to demonstrate how amateur radio works and to show new people, look, we can talk all around the country or, or the world. And to be able to make that point, having contacts rolling in really, really shows that off, as well as our sections that change color when work and our map, which I'll show you in just a moment, and some other things. So, we'll get to it. Let's say you've arrived at the field day site, and someone has either asked you to operate or log for them, and you're wondering what the heck's going on. Using my field day software is really easy. I think you'll pick it up right away. There's just three parts to the exchange. It includes the call, the class, which is just a number and a letter, and the section which is going to be one of these abbreviations that you see over here or DX. So for example if uh, we work W1AW they would send you a, a value here such as 3 echo and then we would probably say Connecticut and you would type those pieces of information in you'd press the enter key and it is logged and you're ready for the next contact. That's and that's that's all there is to it. Just uh, a couple things that I can show you to make life even easier. Uh, you can tab between fields by pressing spacebar or the tab key, but you don't even have to do that. If you type a call, now I'm not even going to press spacebar tab. I'm just going to type the next number and letter, uh, one delta and I'm going to now type the section MDC and, and the program just jumps from one field to the next so it's, it's smart enough to know what you're entering and jumps right along and uh, press enter it's in and you're ready for the next next contact here's an example of how you would log a QSO CQ field day CQ field day November 3 Fox Juliet Papa Kilo Alpha 3, Yankee Juliet Mike. Kilo Alpha 3, Yankee Juliet Mike. Please copy 1 Echo, Mike Delta Charlie. QSL, please copy 1 Delta, Mike Delta Charlie. QSL, thanks for the contact. CQ Field Day, November 3, Foxtrot, Juliet, Papa. Now, let's say you've entered a contact, but you've you realize you made a mistake. Let's say that uh, you realized KA3SEQ had a class of one echo, not one delta. You can just click on the contact and you can edit the contact or you can delete it if you want to wipe it out entirely by clicking the delete button. But we're just going to edit it. So we'll click edit and we'll change one delta to one echo and we'll click done and voila. So that's all there is to editing a contact. The, the rules for field day allow us to work stations once per band and mode. So we can work the same station on a number of different bands or and modes, but we can't work them on the same band and mode. So for example, if we just worked W1AW 
on 10 meter phone, we cannot work them again. So if we start to type W1AW, there's going to be some information presented to us that's going to help us either determine it quickly whether it's a duplicate or not and maybe help us figure out what the call sign might be if we have super check partial enabled which you can enable from the settings menu so we will type uh, W and we see immediately that if the call is W1AW it's possibly a duplicate that, that comes up as you type the first character. As you type the second character, we now have typed W1. We see W1AW is in red, meaning it's a possible duplicate. We also have a list of all uh, super check partial call signs. And what super check partial call signs are, are calls that are known to be active contesters. So if you're, you're not quite sure if you hear the, the call right and, and then you see it listed as a super check partial, it, it gives you a little more confidence that you have the correct call sign. So as we type W1 and then we add the A, you see the possible duplicates and um, partials are still listed and it, there we go. We, we, we have pretty good confidence that it's dupl a duplicate. If we try to tab to the next field, duplicate. We, my wife, <laughs> lets us know in no uncertain terms that it is a duplicate. That was uh, courtesy KA3SEQ. So we hit escape, clear the fields, clear, and we're we're set to go. Now here's an example where if you type W1, but it might be um, Alpha Foxtrot. So okay. This, uh, this doesn't say possible duplicate anymore, it just says super check partial, it, it changed back to gray, there's, and there's no, no red, so we know that uh, we can go ahead and work this station. Another nice feature of the software is if you have worked a station on another band or mode, you don't have to type all the elements of the exchange again. For example, we've worked W1AW on 10 meter phone, if we happen to be on 15 meter phone and we can W1AW calls us again as you can see it's not red this time it's just uh, showing up as a super check partial it doesn't say possible duplicate there's so we we know we're fine to work them um, if we uh, press the space bar to tab uh, three echo Connecticut's already in so we don't have to type anything else another feature of the software is the sections which are listed over here change color when they are worked. In, in this case we're looking at a old uh, field day log from I believe this was uh, 2013 and we worked almost all the sections but here's an example the, the blue sections are worked Alaska we did not work but just to give you an example see it's currently red if I type KL7AA um, one echo and I type AK, the software immediately tells us, hey, that's a new section. And if we press enter and watch this, it turns blue. So uh, that's a lot of fun. It's, it's, uh, sections are not counted as multipliers for field day. They are in some other contests. But in this case, it's just a handy way to demonstrate to anyone stopping by. Look at all the areas that we've worked. Uh, so that's the intent behind that. You can also mouse over each section to see how many times and on what bands you've worked a section. For example, we can mouse over say uh, Georgia 10 times, 40 twice, 27 times, 15 one time. Four of those contacts were CW and six of them were phone. Another neat feature to display the areas that you've contacted is the map feature. If you click view, map, it will fill and sh every section will be colored except for those that were unworked and as you can see we have worked just about all of North America with just the exception of a couple places and another neat feature is the graph which shows just how well you've been doing uh, what your QSO rates have, have been uh, again this is a uh, old data that we're looking at but this shows um, green is phone, blue is CW, 
and these colors here indicate what bands we were on at various times. So uh, as you can see, we had a nice uh, little run up to, uh, had uh, our QSO rate up to 93 Qs per hour, which isn't bad for a single single transmitter station. And, uh, and we uh, switched over to CW for a while. Uh, we took a break, and then uh, on Sunday we got rolling again on, on phone. So this demonstrates how we did over the course of the contest. If you need to change bands or modes, um, you can certainly use rig interface and this software will, will follow along with the rig and I have more details on that if you'd like to set that up. But to change bands, you can just uh, click and select the band, uh, select a, a mode, and uh, you're ready to go. You can also click these guys and they'll cycle through by left clicking and right clicking. So enjoy field day, have fun. If you hear N3FJP, please say hi. Again, my name is Scott. Thanks so much for watching. Take care. God bless.